Well, welcome back to the Steve Rob Show. Today, we have quite an interesting uh, vid going on here. I'm going to be talking about Amazon Associates and how I was turned down by Amazon. It's quite an interesting story, and this is probably going to be a, uh, a video that I'm going to make uh, in one complete section, but over time. So, today what I'm going to talk about is exactly why I got disqualified from Amazon. I'm going to sit down and we're going to have a little bit of a chat. But first of all, I'm going to show you on the screen here why I was turned down by Amazon and how the whole story started. So let's just take a look here and see what this says. Hello, in reviewing your website, we noticed that you've applied with a social network website. However, your site isn't established with enough unique content and followers yet. At this time, we are unable to approve your application and have closed the account under which you have been temporarily approved and that approval has now ended. Thank you for your interest in Amazon.ca Associates. Now, this is the exact same letter that I got from Amazon.com Associates. Well, that was quite interesting there, wasn't it? Okay, now first of all, this all happened back in early November. And I was talking to a couple of my friends and they said, Steve, you know how many times you mention Amazon on your website or on my YouTube channel? And, you know, why don't you put in some links? At least the people could see the products that you've shown over the last couple of years. And if they're interested in buying them, they could buy them. And guess what? You get a little bit of a cut. So I thought, well, I don't know about this. I think about it and I decided, okay, well, I'll do it. So I signed up for the Amazon Associates. I don't even know if you guys even noticed there was any links in there anyways because you know when I I put the links all in previously you know to videos that I've done a long time ago and uh, I thought why not I mean I think the Amazon links are a great way to uh, you know I, I'm showing the products that I buy and just putting a link down there and if you want to take a look at it that's fine and I mean you know it's it, it's, it's no big thing right so well I started off with the amazon.com site first and uh, that was early November and of course I got that same reply back you know in roughly less than 30 days and I was bewildered and I'm thinking wow not a, enough unique content and guys I'm as unique as they get and I'm thinking wow this don't make sense so I fired off an email back to them because you can, there is a spot there you can reply back so I replied back and what did I get back I got back the same form letter, the exact same one, except this time it said you must have a couple of hundred um, viewers and unique content. And I'm thinking to myself, I got a couple of hundred viewers. Maybe my content isn't unique enough. So I get on the phone. Now, yes, they have a, uh, a toll-free number only in the United States. You can't call toll-free in Canada because the... Uh, telephone number is in the United States and it's long distance. So I phoned uh, the United States and I got this person on the line and they didn't have a clue what I was talking about. Then I went to the next person and they didn't have a clue what I was talking about. Then I got the third person and they said, more or less, buddy, we haven't got a clue what you're talking about. This story is new to us. We've never heard this before. So I finally get this nice lady on the phone. And I said, look, I've been trying to find out why I've been canceled for becoming an Amazon associate. So she looks at my file. I was on the phone, guys, a minimum of an hour talking to different people. So finally I got this nice lady at the end there that cleared all this up for me. So what it comes down to was she says, we don't even look at your YouTube page. We don't know if you have unique content, really. Uh, what we're doing is, when we look at your channel, we're just looking to see how many subscribers you have. And uh, they call them followers. So, I says, yeah, that's what I've been trying to tell you guys. Why am I being cancelled? Well, you don't have any followers. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, how does that work? Uh, you just look at somebody's page and just say you're disqualified? Now, the catch was because I don't show how many followers publicly. So I said to the girl, 
you know what? I mean, people on YouTube, some show how many followers they have, some don't show, some show the thumbs up, some don't show the thumbs up and the thumbs down stuff. It's all optional on YouTube, so you, you have a right to do this. And she goes, yeah, that's fine, no problem, but we don't have time, you know, for, uh, to check into your YouTube channel. So I said, okay, that's, that's very, that, that's cool with me, but uh, how about if I send you a screenshot? Because I have a lot more than a couple hundred followers. So she goes, no, we can't be doing that. I mean, you know how much time that would take. And, you know, we just, it, it's not in our more or less rules that we can do this. So I thought, wow. Like, I mean, that's something else. And every time you send a, um, an email to Amazon, they always send you back a reply saying, how was your experience with the person you talked to? Did they get your problem resolved? And one of the boxes there was, and like kind of improve flexibility of their rules and that kind of stuff. So I kept replying back that, you know, I don't agree with that rule and you should have a little bit of flexibility. Well, all I got back was the same form letter that we started off with in the beginning of this video. So I thought this, this doesn't make sense to me. So I thought, you know what, let's just uh, talk to the president of, uh, or the CEO of Amazon. And I thought, I know how big business works. I'm quite familiar with it. So I thought, okay, I'll get Jeff's, uh, Jeff Bezos their um, email address and I'll fire him off an email. And I explained to him, no, I can't show any of these emails because they're confidential. I wouldn't want anybody showing my emails back and forth either. But uh, I more or less told Jeff, I says, Jeff, I spent well over an hour on the phone talking to your people. I spent so much time with emails going back and forth till I finally figured out it was because I don't show how many followers I have on my channel. But it's obvious when you look at my channel and somebody has over hundreds and hundreds of videos and a half a million viewers, half a million views, that it's illogical to think that I couldn't have some followers. So I'd like you to take a look at your policy and see if there's room for improvement or, as you say on your website, uh, improvement in flexibility. And I think it's only fair that if I were to send in a screenshot of my, uh, you know, how many followers I have, that that would be fair. And I, and I explained to him, like, I've spent an enormous amount of time of yours and mine when you know, looking at a five second screenshot to say yes or no would make sense to me. And that's where we are right now. So I don't know where this is going to go. Uh, it's uh, December the 6th today. And it's been about four days since I sent an email to Jeff. And we'll see how this goes. Now I'm not going to put this onto another video. I'm just going to continue this as it plays out. And when we have a resolve completely, then I will finish this video. But for now, I thought that was pretty interesting to bring up and what you should know about being an Amazon associate. And the hardest part I found about being an Amazon associate is the communication at Amazon. Guys, it is very, very uh, spotty. You have to get the right person on the phone. Uh, a lot of times, I think what they're doing is they're just looking like in a call center, looking at their their format of what they're allowed to say and not say because not one person on the phone had said to me that they have run into this before and the person that I finally got at the end this nice lady at the end she goes Steve I'll tell you what I says that's not in the rules um, when you open up your account for uh, to become an Amazon associate that is not shown and that's a good suggestion and I suggested to her I said you know you should really put that in your when you're opening up an Amazon associate account that you must have your followers shown publicly and she said that's a great suggestion and she's going to recommend it that that will go in next time now I'm hoping that Jeff will say no uh, I think it's uh, a little onerous uh, to uh, have such stringent rules like that when I'm actually helping the company out you know by putting in links on my my uh, YouTube page just like so many other uh, channels do, and I think it's just terrific. And, uh, you know, it, I really can't see the downside of this, so that's why I decided to go with uh, Jeff and talk to him. So we'll see where this goes, guys, and stay tuned, because uh, we're going to be back in two seconds when we find out the resolve. Okay, I'm back. It's 2018 now, 
And uh, first I'd like to start off with uh, just saying, I did a vid a little while ago about me doing a, um, an un unboxing of my solar panels I got from Amazon. And I had mentioned that they had shipped me the, uh, the wrong ones at first. And then that day, they came and picked them up. And it was late at night. This was before Christmas. Uh, maybe 9 o'clock at night. And uh, I got a little form. You know, like a receipt that they had picked them up and everything. Well, today I get an email from Amazon. And it looks like they're going to charge me again for the solar panels. Because they say they haven't had them, you know, returned. And I couldn't figure this out. So, of course, I phone Amazon. And I tell you what, every time I phone Amazon, I always get it resolved somehow. But they seem to be very confused over there. So I phoned up and I says, I don't understand this email that I haven't returned the solar panels. You guys came and picked them up December the 13th. So they says, do you have the receipt? I says, yeah. Well, could you give us a tracking number and tell us what company it was that come and picked them up? And I thought, like, what's going on here? They sent the truck to my place. You know, they should have an idea and have a receipt and have a copy of what's going on. So, I give her all the different numbers and that kind of stuff, and they had to actually phone the trucking company on the phone while I was waiting on the phone. So she gets back on the phone, she goes, sorry, uh, you shouldn't have received that email. I'll send you a confirmation email that you shouldn't have received it, and we're not going to charge your uh, charge card uh, for, you know, the solar panels that won't return. I thought, well, that's nice. And uh, so that's exactly what they did. And, and you know, it's, uh, it was very confusing because, you know, like when I'm talking to Amazon, when you phone them up, wow, it's like trying to pull hen's teeth. So I got that all sorted out. Then, about maybe 20 minutes later, <laughs> I get another email. And that's from the nice lady I was talking about in the first part of this video. And I got an email over Christmas, just before Christmas, saying, um, could you update your, your tax information so that we can pay you for your Amazon account? And I'm going, okay, like what's going on here? So, I mean, they had closed both my uh, Canadian and USA Amazon accounts. So I just type back and I say, well, no sense me doing anything. You just closed my accounts. I have no access to them anymore. And every time I had talked to them from the beginning to now, they always said in a letter, and I got all these paperwork, you know, I, I saved everything, all the emails, and they always say, once your, once your account is closed, it cannot be reopened. And if, you, if you'd like, open up another account at any time. You're welcome to open up another account. So I got the exact same letter again. So I had fired off an email back and said, well, you know, you closed my two accounts and I have no access to get to them anymore. It wasn't an hour, maybe two hours later, I get another email. And it's from the nice lady I was talking to on the phone a long time ago. So somehow they're tracking my files somewhere. So she more or less says to me, look, I'm going to open up your account for three days so you can straighten out your account and get paid. Now, I think it was like, it's under $20, guys. It's not a lot of money. So I just emailed nicely back to her, and I says, uh, thank you very much, but uh, I'm not interested in your Amazon associate program anymore. And if there's any money there, just give it to a nice charity, you know, like a charity that Amazon sponsors, right? I said, give the money to a charity. And uh, I thought that was, that was it. But no, 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 no. <laughs> I get another one back and it says uh, we've given you the opportunity of three days um, if in the future you'd like to get your money I guess then uh, then update your account you know for your taxation on Amazon and I'm not going to do anything more about that and then that's about it and of course at the bottom feel free at any time to open up another Amazon account you're welcome to join the Amazon associate program well, no, you're not. Uh, <laughs> not unless you publicly show your, uh, 
the amount of viewers or followers you have. And a lot of you guys are probably saying, okay, so why don't you just show your followers or viewers in that? Well, to me, I think the sub counter is just, you know, I don't even pay no attention to a sub counter. When I'm looking at somebody's YouTube channel, I don't care less how many subscribers they got. I'm looking at their content and whether I want to watch them or not. And I've been approached by so many different companies from auto parts to LED lights to everything else. And my sub counter has never been shown. And they're looking at my channel and all they care about is my content and my views. And what I'm doing on my channel. They couldn't care less about the, uh, the sub counter. So I think Amazon has to really uh, up their game a bit there. Uh, <laughs> you know. Guys, it was so frustrating trying to deal with them. So, I never did hear anything back from uh, Jeff Bales, the CEO of, uh, of Amazon. I don't think I will. I'm just going to post this video as this. If I do hear back anything from them, then fine. But guys, this was just a nightmare of an experience. Burnt up so much of my time, you know, trying to become an Amazon associate. <laughs> and to me, I just can't see it. Um, if Jeff actually ever does reply, I mean, most corporations, good corporations will. And uh, if he does, well, then I'll update this video. But in the meantime, this was just an Amazon story from hell. And, uh, you know, all the power to use guys that can, uh, you know, uh, navigate your way through Amazon and Amazon customer service. Because I had just the worst experience ever trying to deal with uh, Amazon. So that's pretty well it to the story so far, guys. Thanks for joining me in this uh, little bit of a drama story about Amazon. If you guys never seen this channel before, you're welcome to subscribe. Come back again. Let's have some more fun. Cheers.